What's going on? Welcome to today's video. This video is highly requested video. Funny enough, if you've been following me since I started my YouTube channel, I made a carb cycling video. It's probably like my 10th video or something like that and I made it so long ago, but I'm so awful at editing and talking. It was just embarrassing, don't watch it. But I'm gonna redo the video, make it a little bit better, make it a little bit more clear. More questions that you guys have, like now that I've had a channel for a while, I know the more of the questions that pop up that weren't addressed in that video, so we're going to address them here. But before we start today's video, I just wanna give a shout out to One Piece. This is the onesie that I'm wearing right now. It's a like tight, comfortable sweatpants one piece it's great and I did a video with them a few months back and I did not have a discount code for you guys so they have kindly provided me a discount code the link is gonna be in the description box if you're interested in these onesies go check it out but aside from that we are going to get into the video Three. video we're gonna be talking about carb cycling what is it who's supposed to be using it um, when do you need it and how to actually go about creating a carb cycle structure for yourself I'm gonna be writing out a bunch of stuff and making it really clear for you guys so carb cycling what is it it's essentially when you change your macronutrients on a day-to-day -day basis a systematic increase and decrease of carbohydrates throughout the week you're gonna be changing the amount of carbs you have on a day-to-day -day basis some days you'll be having a lower carb day lower carb carb day with potentially having a little bit of higher fats. Some people keep their fats stable, but you can do a little bit higher fat and a little bit higher protein on your lower carb days, but some people keep them stable, but again, this all depends. And then you have your higher carb days where you're gonna have higher carbs, potentially lower fats, but again, either they're like a little bit different or just kept stable, but essentially that's the brunt of it, lower carb days and higher carb days. I've heard of people doing no carb days and like medium carb days. I would not recommend anybody do a no carb day that doesn't even exist because you're eating carbs from trace sources but you're just not putting carbohydrate actual carbohydrates into your diet unless you're interested in doing a keto type diet which I have never done personally a lot of people do it potentially like it I've never actually tried it myself but a keto is essentially where you're eating little to no carbs like essentially all proteins and fats and it is a proven way to lose body fat because you are putting yourself in a caloric deficit but you're just eating different macronutrient ratios I like to say that that it's good if you are down for that, but I like carbs, so I'm not, I don't, I don't wanna do keto. It's like not a sustainable lifestyle type thing for me. It's cool, but it's not like the only way to lose fat. You can still eat carbs and still lose fat. So if you like your carbs, you are in the right video. <laughs> okay, so there are a few benefits that carb cycling has. If you're cycling your carbs, number one, you're going to boost your metabolism. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but your metabolism will be a little bit more boosted if you are carb cycling for fat loss. And when you're having your low carb days, it's going to maximize fat loss. And then your high carb days are going to help maximize maintaining your muscle mass, which is what we all want to do, right? We want to maximize fat loss and maintain the hard earned muscle that we already have. And you're also going to be potentially having better workouts when you do a carb cycle, depending on your carb cycle, because those higher carb days will store your glucose in your muscles and you'll have a better workout. You'll have more energy as opposed to just always having a low carb diet or always having the same amount of calories. You're going to be able to get a spike in your energy and you're gonna have better workouts because of that okay so who needs carb cycling who is gonna need a carb cycle or want to implement one if you are more overweight on the overweight side you might not necessarily need to have a bunch of high carb days because your body doesn't necessarily need them the high carb days help you boost your metabolism back up when you're in a caloric deficit and for someone who might be like a lower body fat percentage to start with and they're just trying to cut um, maybe like 10 to 15 pounds of fat as opposed to like 30 40 50 or so you might not necessarily need it if you're at that higher body fat percentage because your body still has a lot of fat to take stores from and the carb cycling might not be necessary for you yet you might have higher carb days to keep your mental sanity or you might just have like a day or two every single month or every single week where you get to like enjoy yourself but if you are a little bit more overweight I would highly recommend just to choose healthier options maintain a more healthy lifestyle exercise three to four to five times a week and just choose healthier 
things and then you can also in implement like a day where you're not tracking or like a higher carb day just because it's mental sanity too like that's okay to have those days where you're not always eating low carb because that's gonna help you continue on your sustainability it's gonna make a more sustainable diet and lifestyle for you but for someone that might be starting a contest prep or starting a cut at like a medium or so body fat percentage carb cycling might be a good idea to start implementing I wouldn't recommend starting a carb cycle if this is your first time tracking your calories or macros I would get the basics down first to start before you start playing around with carb cycling but this could be something to think about in the future so still stick around for this video other things that carb cycling might help with if you are struggling to break past the plateau or if you're struggling with cravings carb cycling could be another good thing to implement for you but on the other side I've also heard of people and I've experienced some myself where if you have a higher carb day and a lower carb day during a cutting phase during a caloric deficit those higher carb days might trigger more cravings and more hunger and more food because your metabolism is getting spiked back up and you feel a little bit more freedom because you have a higher carb day and you're like it's fine it's high carb day so either way it could help cravings or it could increase them more you really have to do some trial and error and figure out what works for you okay so here's the carb cycling how do you do it what does it look like so I'm gonna show you guys a little clip of a graph that I created so essentially this little graph is gonna show you time and then your weight loss and that straight line is going to be the caloric deficit or the calories that dotted line is your first clip you're gonna see if you do a regular standard diet your calories go lower 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 and so does your metabolism it goes right with it guys and another example of this is I like to use a hair elastic to explain this. So if you are here and this is your starting calorie and metabolism, so this is starting metabolism, this is starting calorie, and you're just lowering it a lot, a lot, a lot. You see the metabolism right here, it's going right with you. And it's just gonna keep lowering. And then if you're on a standard, like continuing to drop your calories lower, lower without ever pulling them back up, which is what a carb cycle does. So a carb cycle, you would see lower calories, slower metabolism, and then increased calories. And this kind of gets boosted back up a little bit. And then over time, you still do that and your metabolism lowers with your calories but it still spikes back up a little bit more so you can keep burning fat and you can keep being a fat burning furnace so here's a little graph showing you exactly what I just showed you with the hair elastic you're gonna see caloric calorie intake lower and then when you spike it up with a refeed day or a high carb day it's gonna go right back up and so is your metabolism it might slow back down a little bit again along with some fat loss but again after another refeed day your body might need it depending on your level of leanness your training, your cardio, all that stuff, your metabolism is going to spike back up a little bit and keep you burning body fat. So another question I get is about frequency. How many high carb days do you need? What do you even do with that? There's options for frequency guys. You can choose a few different things, but choosing might not necessarily be just what you want to do. It's just what might be what's best for you. I have tried a few different things and what works for me personally and has worked for the last like three years is a three low, one high cycle. I've tried a few other things where I did a seven low carb day and three high carb day or a six low and a one high, or you can do a five low and too high in a row, anything like that. I'm gonna show you a few examples of what you can do here. For me personally, I like the three low and one high carb cycle. It really works for me. So we're gonna do a little bit of math and explain to you how to actually calculate your own macronutrients in terms of your carb cycle. For example, if we're gonna give someone an average maintenance calorie intake, so this is say maybe a girl my size, this isn't my calories or macros or anything, I made sure to not do mine, but I just wanna show you guys as an example of somebody else. Let's say you're a female and you weigh like 135 pounds or so and your maintenance calories are right around 1850 so we're gonna put maintenance right around 1850 and your like slight bulk macros might be our calories might be right around 2100 and then your cutting calories might be right around 1500 that's about two three hundred calories to 350 or so less than your maintenance calories what you're gonna do is take that maintenance calorie number and that's going to be where your high carb is gonna be at and that low carb that cutting calorie calorie numbers where your low carb days are going to be at. So if you're not sure how to calculate your own macronutrients based off of calories, make sure you go to the link in the description box. It's going to be the one right after the onesie link and it's going to say amandabucci.com. Go there, sign up for my email list and you will get your free macro calculating ebook if you're interested in that. You can also go to the link in my Instagram and you can get that directly, but go there and make sure you get that macro calculating ebook so you know how to actually calculate all these numbers. I did not do a separate video on this, but 
if you get that ebook, it's just a few pages long. It's like three or four pages. I'll show you what it looks like on the screen right here. You can check that out. But either way, we're gonna go right into it. So let's go ahead and take our high carb day numbers. So we're gonna take, this is just an estimate. This is like not what you should do if that's what you weigh or how tall you are or whatever. This is just an example. Okay, so if you are at 1850 calories, we're gonna go ahead and put 125 protein, 45 grams of fat, and 236 grams of carbs. That's gonna all math out to 1850. And then your 1500 calorie low carb days are gonna be at 125 protein, 50 grams of fat, and 137 grams of carbs. I have notes that I wrote out here. So we're gonna use those numbers as our example carb cycle. And what we're also gonna use as, as an example is a two days a week high carb day and five day a week low carb day. For example, I wrote out here a Sunday through Saturday example for you guys. So you can do low carb day, low carb day, low carb day, high carb day, low carb, low carb, high carb. You can do a three, one, three, one, but this is just an example for like a week in general. So I did seven days instead of an eight day thing. Regardless, this is an example of how you can set something up for yourself. And another thing to mention is that this carb cycle might change depending on your training. I know some people might be doing a carb cycle where they're training days are on their higher carb days and their lower carb days are a rest day or a cardio day only but I kind of like to keep my training a little bit more structured and my carb cycle a little bit more structured so this is all going to depend on you as well but an example of what you can do is you can start three low carb days and you can do a lower body day an upper body day and then make that last low carb day a rest day and the next day is gonna be a high carb day and then you're gonna do a lower body day on that day and with that being said high carb days are where you're supposed to be restoring your muscle glycogen and restoring your energy so personally I like to have my harder training day which might be leg day squat day deadlift day whatever the day after a high carb day but a lot of people feel the energy right away or you can have your heavier training day on a high carb day but I would recommend having most of your carbs like around your workout it's like definitely having some before or at least working out towards the end of the day after you've had a lot of those calories in because if you think about it you're pretty depleted in the morning of your high carb day you're gonna be the most depleted so you want to make sure you have enough energy to get that really killer workout in so I'd recommend either training at night or doing your heavier day the next day but the rest of the example that I put on here the next day after the high carb day can be an upper body day if you want to grow your upper body too that's a good way to get all of that all those carbs into your muscle and really kill that upper body workout the next day can be a rest day slash cardio day and the next day can be a lower day one more thing that I really like to mention when it comes to high carb days this is not like a body <laughs> verse or anything like that. You don't have to stick to this 100%, but you want to keep cardio to your low carb days because the whole point of the high carb day is to make your calorie amount that high. And if you're depleting your calories, if you're expending more energy and your calorie intake energy balance is lower because you're doing cardio on your high carb day, it's not going to work as well. It's not going to be doing its job. So keep cardio just to low carb days. And then you can also keep your rest days to low carb days as well. It's not the worst thing in the world if your rest day lands on a high carb day, not the worst thing in the world if your cardio lands on a high carb day and you can't get it in any other day. Again, this is all about being flexible, finding something that works for you. So don't take these things as Bible, but they are things to kind of think about. If you can stick to those a little bit more, it might be that 1% that might help you a little bit more. So something else that I wanted to mention was a refeed day slash high carb day. They're quite similar versus a cheat day. So you saw that we calculated out a little bit. I'm gonna do some more calculations on the screen right now, that if you have your low carb days and your high carb days at the 1500 and the 1800 calories, for the entire week, that seven day span, if you add it up, it's 11,200 calories. And that's calculated. So that's gonna be something that you're gonna hit every single week, and that's gonna keep you in a weekly caloric deficit. So if you decide that you wanna have a cheat day or a cheat meal, instead, that weekly caloric deficit might not happen because you don't have your calories calculated. If you go on a cheat day on your supposed high carb day, you might be eating 2,800 calories or 3,200 calories, and then your calories at the end of the week accumulate to something that isn't keeping you in that weekly caloric deficit. So you're not actually going to be making progress. It might be better for your mental sanity. So it depends on you how much you really want to stick to your progress. If you watch my two videos ago, I talked about this, like the levels of giving a shit, like how much do you really care? If you really want that,
that cheat day and you just don't want to track anything and you don't want to calculate it, that's completely fine. It's up to you. But if you want to be a little bit more optimal in what you're doing, making that calculated refeed day or high carb day is a little bit more optimal for progress. And the last thing that I want to talk about is how do you adjust your calories throughout a cut, especially if you're carb cycling. This is honestly going to be so individual based off the person. I cannot say that this example is going to work for everybody, but I'm going to show you a little bit of math on the screen right now of something that you can do if this is like a really just to kind of give you guys a visual and an idea of what you can potentially do. Those starting macros and calories that I got for the first example, the next maybe two or three weeks or so, you can adjust again, depending on if you're stalling, depending on if you feel like you need to adjust, you can adjust a little bit on your high carb days and your low carb days or either or, and then maybe a few weeks go by, you're still losing body fat, maybe you added a little bit of cardio. Um, you can also do that because that's also adjusting your caloric energy balance as well. So adding cardio is another kind of way to decrease your caloric deficit without decreasing food. So that's an option. But say you've added a little bit of cardio, you're still losing fat, and then a few weeks go by, you want to add a little bit more of a caloric deficit. So you adjust your macros again to this, and then maybe a few weeks go by and you do it again. But this is just an example, guys. You don't have to use this 100%. Like I said, take it as an example, and maybe this is something that you can implement into your routine to potentially help you lose body fat more efficiently give you a little bit more sanity. It's a little bit more fun and enjoyable, and it's really a fun challenge to see how it can change your body. I would make sure that if you are carb cycling, don't focus so much on the scale because your calorie levels are gonna change by the day and your food choices might be changing. You might be doing a flexible diet because it's a little bit easier to implement that into a carb cycle where your calories are constantly changing. But if you're doing that, don't go off the scale too much on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe like once a week or once every few weeks, weigh yourself, but it's gonna be really, variable because your calories are variable and your water is going to be variable. Your training might be variable. Nothing's going to be super consistent because you're adjusting things here and there. So don't go by the scale. Go by how you feel. Go by how you look and go by your energy levels, your training performance, all of that stuff. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. I know it was a little bit long, but I hope that the visuals helped show you guys a little bit more about carb cycling. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, share it with anybody you think would might benefit from the video. And again, if you're are looking for a onesie <laughs> go in the description box one piece is awesome and they're offering you guys a discount code either way again thank you guys so much for watching the video click the subscribe button before you head out and i will catch you guys in the next one